Hi guys. Today I want to talk to you about something that's really, really important to me. It's the microbiome. So something super fascinating, and I'll bet you didn't know this either. Um, for every one human cell that we have on our body, and we've got tons and hundreds of thousands of cells, for every one cell that we have, we've got 10 other types of cells living in, through, and around us. I bet you never imagined somebody would tell you one day that your bacteria dictate your cravings that your microbiome dictates your cravings. Unreal, right? Well, it's true. There's some research that shows that the populations of bacteria that you have growing in your gut, in your colon mostly, dictate your cravings. We know that a lot of the reasons that we have sugar cravings is because the bacteria that we have in our gut crave sugar. They live off of sugar. So it would be natural for you to wanna crave that sugar as well. What happens, and we know this, is that within 48 hours after you change your diet, your gut bacteria change. So if you were to go sugar-free within 48 hours, you theoretically should be starting on that path to craving less and less sugar. Two to five pounds of bacteria are what live in our gut, which is pretty crazy stuff. The majority of our stool is actually bacteria, believe it or not, it's dead bacteria. So it's kind of interesting stuff. Why is this important and why do I care about it? These bacteria, the populations of bacteria you have actually keep you healthy. They dictate your health. Everything from um, your overall health and your immune system to even markers of inflammation, um, your susceptibility to infection, and maybe even development of some cancers. The more diverse that our microbiomes are, the healthier we are as people. If you think about it, the nutrition for your colon, you gotta eat healthy things. By eating healthy, I mean eating whole foods, none of this processed foods, lots of this fiber stuff. Fiber is one of those things that is so healthy for us. And one of the main things fiber does is it feeds the bacteria in our gut. The good bacteria, the ones that really make the probiotics, the biome, the bacteria that really make the microbiome healthy. The fiber is what feeds that. For us, for women, we need 28 grams of fiber per day. I would bump that up to 30 at least. I think those estimates are low. Um, 30 grams of fiber a day, if you think about it, that's kind of hard to get. And then it's 40 grams per day for men in the US. Those are the requirements for fiber. As Americans, we don't get that. You don't get fiber in your white Wonder Bread. You don't get fiber in your Spam and your chips and all that. You really gotta work on getting the fiber from whole foods, whole grains, and things that really are healthy and feed your good gut bacteria. Good examples of prebiotics are gonna be like chicory, and inulin is the chemical in chicory, that's a really good one. Onions are a good one, leeks, asparagus, um, chia seeds. Chia seeds is a really a superfood if you think about it. You have omega-3s in there, so omega-3 fatty acids, which are really healthy. They're super high in protein, and they're also prebiotic, they have this insoluble fiber so our body can't dissolve it per se but the bacteria in our gut dissolve it and when the bacteria in our gut are what that's what they feed on then you really select for the healthy bacteria so what we can do with that what can we do with this information super powerful information if you think about it we can manipulate what types of bacteria fungus yeast live in our colon in our GI tract, in our mouth, everywhere, and we can actually help dictate our health by doing this. We know that we are more healthy if we have healthy microbiome, and the microbiome can be altered. There's a theory that when you're a kid, if you are on antibiotics or you're in a very sterile environment and you're not exposed to bacteria, that you actually don't get that stimulus to develop your immune system and you don't get a healthy microbiome. So there's a lot of people that think that Things like asthma, other autoimmune diseases are caused by a lack of educating your immune system when you're a child through your microbiome. So with the hygiene hypothesis, the theory is that the dirtier you are, the healthier you are. So one of uh, my favorite authors, Robin Chutkin, um, her book is, she has a theory and it's called Live Dirty, Eat Clean, meaning you wanna live with your feet in the sand, you wanna be kinda um, walking around, just making contact with the earth, with your feet. Um, you want to limit the amount of antibacterial soaps that you use. These antibacterial soaps are, they're no good. Um, the other things you want to do, you want to like limit the showers that you take. 
You want to shower every other day rather than every day. Um, and it's kind of counterintuitive, but when you shower every day, you wash away a lot of those good bacteria. So you get the stinky, nasty ones in your armpits and stuff. If you shower every other day, um, you're going to give time for that good bacteria to flourish and you don't wipe it away. Just give it a try sometime, experiment, maybe skip a shower a day and see how your body reacts. Um, the other things are like soap, so like uh, shampooing your hair. You may not want to shampoo every day because that wipes out a lot of the important bacteria and it kind of makes your microbiome get out of balance a little bit. If you have a really unhealthy microbiome and you like you don't have very much diversity because diversity is a measure of how healthy your microbiome is. If you don't have much diversity, you're gonna have a really crappy immune system. You're gonna get sick easily. You're not gonna have a defense against anything. And honestly, I hate to say this because I'm in the medical profession, a bad microbiome and an unhealthy microbiome, one of the major culprits of this is antibiotic therapy. My my words of advice to you, if you're prescribed an antibiotic, it's just to ask your doctor, do I really need this? Is this indicated? And if the answer is yes, then it might be you know, worth the risk. And we can talk about how to negate the effects of antibiotics in another video. But um, if it's one of those gray areas, probably not a good idea to take them. Don't get me wrong, antibiotics have their place. Some people are really sick and they genuinely need antibiotics. I'm a surgeon, I know this, but there's a lot of wishy-washy gray areas and you know, patients end up getting antibiotics and when you take one course, one course of broad spectrum antibiotic, it can kill a third of your microbiome. It can just wipe it out. And if you have wiped out bacteria, you're just gonna have um, no diversity. You're gonna be more prone to illness. Your immune system is just gonna go down and down and it's just not gonna be a good situation. Those are some strategic things that you could do to try to keep a healthy microbiome. And all that is in addition to diet. If you eat really healthily, um, you're gonna have a really, really healthy gut bacteria, a healthy microbiome, and you're gonna be a healthier person. So um, take that information home, eat some really healthy food, and really work on cultivating that microbiome. All right, so that's enough for today. We're gonna go watch the sunset. It's beautiful. We're just gonna go and enjoy the moment and maybe get our feet in the mud. Aloha.